May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the Church begins the fast of the Quattro Tempora, or as we call it, of the Ember Days. It includes also the Friday and Saturday of the same week. This observance is not peculiar to the Advent liturgy, but is fixed for each of the four seasons of the ecclesiastical year. We may consider it as a part of those practices which the Church took from the synagogue. For the prophet Zechariah speaks of the fourth, fifth, seventh, and tenth month. Its introdu introduction into the Christian Church would seem to have been made in apostolic times. Such, at least, is the opinion of St. Leo, St. Isidore of Sevilla, Rabanus Maurus, and of several other ancient Christian writers. From the first ages, the Ember Days were kept in the Roman Church at the same time of the year as at present. As to the expression, which is not infrequently used in the early writers, of three times and not of four, we must remember that in spring, the Ember Days always come in the first week of Lent, a period which is already consecrated to the most rigorous fasting and abstinence, and that consequently one could hardly add anything to the penitential exercises of that portion of the year. The intentions which the Church has in the fast of the Ember Days are the same as those of the synagogue namely, to consecrate to God by penance the four seasons of the year. St. Leo, in one of his sermons on this fast, and of which the Church has inserted a passage in the Divine Office, tells us that a special fast was fixed for this time of the year, because the fruits of the earth had then all been gathered in, and that it was convenient for Christians to testify their gratitude to God, by a sacrifice of abstinence, thus rendering themselves more worthy to approach God, the more they were detached from the love of created things. Fasting, adds the Holy Doctor, has ever been the nourishment of virtue. Through abstinence, by voluntary mortifications, the flesh dies to its concupiscences, and the spirit is renewed in virtue. But since fasting alone is not sufficient to secure the soul's salvation, let us add to it works of mercy towards the poor. Let the abstinence of him that fasts become the meal of the poor man. Since the actual discipline of Advent is so very mild, let us be more fervent in observing the fast of the Ember Days. Let us keep within ourselves the zeal of our holy forefathers, for this holy season of Advent. We should never forget that although the interior preparation is what is absolutely essential for our profiting by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, anyhow, this preparation could scarcely be real unless it manifested itself by the exterior practices of devotion and penance. The fast of the Ember Days has also another object beside that of consecrating the four seasons to the, of the year to God by an act of penance. It also has in view the ordination of the ministers of the Church, which takes place on the Saturday, and of which the notice was formally given to the people during the Mass of the Wednesday. In the Roman Church, the ordination held in the month of December was for a long time the most solemn of all, and it would appear from ancient chronicles that except in very extraordinary cases, the tenth month was for several ages the only time for the conferring of holy orders in Rome. The faithful should unite with the Church in this her intention and offer to God their fasting and abstinence for the purpose of obtaining worthy ministers of the Word and of the sacraments, and true pastors of the people. The Church reads during today's Holy Mass a passage from the chapter of St. Luke, 
which gives Our Lady's Annunciation. The fact of this Gospel having been chosen for today has made the Wednesday of the third week of Advent a particularly marked day in our calendar. Let us therefore propose to use with moderation what God gives us through nature and to also share these gifts with the poor. We want to ask Our Lady of the Annunciation to dispose us in such a way that at Christmas we may worthily receive the coming Christ into our hearts. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph be blessed, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.